this is a Bailey Ranger 474. I'm going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. Front of the van, you've got your hitch, jockey wheel, and handbrake. And in the front locker, you've got your gas bottle, two gas bottle tie downs, and your gas regulator on the bulkhead. Fitment that goes into the bottle is a reverse red fitment, and you have to turn on the gas valve on top to get gas flow through to the caravan. On each side at the front of the van, you have your wind down legs to stabilize the caravan, and they are, they are only there for stabilizing the van. You never lift the caravan with the wind down legs. Your motor mover and wheels. The motor mover will demonstrate here on site and we'll talk the wheel nuts before you leave site with the caravan so you can see they've been done correctly. Then got your two grey waste pipes coming out the side of the van which drop down into your waste master so essentially the fresh water that goes in here has to come out somewhere and it comes out down the side here. Water pump connection very simply pull back the trigger and push it into the side of the van and lock it into place and to release it you pull the trigger back and pull towards you. Vent cover here it has to be removed before you ignite anything on gas inside of the caravan. Toilet tank at the rear of the van. Very easy to use. You pull the cassette out with the yellow handle at the bottom, pull the cassette towards you. The neck here turns out so you can tip the waste away. You've got a yellow pressure relief button on the back of the cassette. Um, so when you are tipping the waste away, it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. And that tank will take one liter of water and a cap full of the blue fluid prior to use. Got your toilet flush tank, which takes three and a half litres of water and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use. On the back of the caravan either side, again, you have your wind down legs to stabilise the caravan, as you can see. So, like I said, they are only there for stabilising rather than lifting the caravan. Coming down the door side, you've got your battery box, so you've got your quick release terminals on top of the battery, your mains power lead coming into the caravan. Um, and a motor move, and there's also a power switch inside the van for the motor mover itself. Two battery, uh, sorry, two fridge vents here. So the two fridge vents allow the hot air out the back of the fridge unit and also taking some cool air. And also behind one of these covers, there is a gas flute for the uh, gas system for the fridge itself. Go inside the van now. You've got your master control panel. So you've got your master power, lights on, and awning lights on. So that's the internal lights and your outside light. Down the bottom here, you've got your water pump, which I'll demonstrate to you in a moment. And at the top here, you've got your battery voltage for the caravan itself. First thing you're going to need to do is when you come inside the caravan is fill the water system. So you're going to make sure the pump is turned off. You're going to have the acrylic and the water pump connected on the outside. All the taps on the caravan are going to need to be open on the hot side, as you can see here. At the moment, the water system's already full because I've already done it before we've started doing the video just to speed up the process. But you're going to open all the taps up on the hot side. And you'll leave them open. I've turned them off obviously because the system's already full. But then what you'll do is you'll come over to the water pump switch here, turn the water pump on, and the water system will start filling. And eventually you'll have water running continuously out of every tap on the caravan. At that point, you can shut all of the taps off and you'll be able to start thinking about warming the water on board the caravan. So as you can see, I've turned the tap off here now. You can also do the same once the system's full and you've got water coming out of every tap on the bathroom, uh, bathroom tap on the sink and also the shower as well. Once that's, oh, one thing I haven't shown you, sorry, the drain down valve, quite important. You need to know where that is. So underneath this seat down here, there is actually a yellow valve. Now you can just about see it in the video here on the left-hand side of the screen. That yellow valve, before you start filling the water system, needs to be parallel with the floor. So as it is at the moment in the video, you need to have it parallel with the floor to be able to fill the water system and if it was pointing upright towards the bottom of the seat, it would actually drain all the water off the system on board the van. To warm the water up, you have two control panels just down the side here. Now on this switch here, you have your electric water heating, which as you can see is already turned on. And to the left of it, you have your gas water heating. Now the electric one, as long as you connect it to 240 mains, will connect up and start running straight away. On the right left hand side here, you have your gas valve. So you spin the dial around to the gas symbol to get it to ignite on gas. The green light in here indicates it's igniting to start with. And if that green light stays on and no red light appears, then it has ignited on gas. In a moment, you will actually see that red light appear when it fails. There we go. And that red light is indicating to me it has failed to ignite on gas because we haven't got the gas turned on. And also that cover is on on the outside of the van that you need to remove. So when it does ignite on gas, you can essentially control the water temperature on gas between 30 and 70 degrees of water temperature. 
whatever numbers above the green light is the temperature it will warm up to. So that is your water heating on gas and electric for the caravan. Next up we're going to go to the room heating for the van. Now down at the front of the caravan, on the left hand side, you'll notice you have two more switches, very similar to the water heater ones. However, this control, instead of being gas, is actually for the electric heating. So first of all, we're going to need to turn on the room heater. Then above it, we're going to need to select the amount of power we have coming into the caravan from the caravan site we're on. So for instance, here on site, we can run 500 watts into our heating system. As you can see here, 500 watts of power coming in. And then we can control the temperature of the heater on the dial in the center here. One being the lowest temperature, nine being the highest. Obviously on some sites you will be able to run the one uh, the 1000 watts and 2000 watts. The only way you'd know what power setting you can run the heating on is asking the site office when you arrive. Turn the heating back off, you'll spin it around to the zero again on the side here, this grey dial, and that will allow the heating to be turned off. Now with the heating as well, you have the option to run on gas, a bit like the water heating, but it works slightly differently. You have to just manually ignite the water heater on gas, so you spit uh, the heating system on gas. So you spin this dial around on top, hold down the gas valve, and you'll continue to hold down the gas valve. It's only because I've got one hand free that I'm going to do it this way. You then hit the igniter with the gas valve held, held down. And when it ignites, you'll have a pilot light in this window at the front of the heater. Once it's ignited, you'll continue to hold down the gas valve for 5 to 10 seconds once it's ignited then slowly release the gas valve and control the temperature on the dial on top. To turn the gas off, you'll spin the dial all the way back round to pass the zero and that will isolate the gas supply going into the heating system. On the right hand side, you have your option to run blown air. So you've got your fan speed on top here. The dot in the center indicates the heat is gonna come out the front of the heater. The wave symbol here is continuous blown air. So essentially now, you'll see that uh, the air is coming out that little vent down there on the floor. I'm blowing the mat around on the floor. And essentially that is blown air, but that is continuous blown air. If I put it onto the A on the opposite side, it's thermostatic blown air. So essentially the thermostat will kick in and out uh, with the temperature. So essentially as the, sorry, as the van warms up, the fan system will stay on and it will start blowing the air out around the van. Once it reaches temperature, the fan will kick out, then kick back in as the temperature cools down. Next up, we're going to go to the fridge system itself. Now with the fridge, it's very simple to use. On the left hand side here, we have a dial for controlling the power supply we want to use. So for instance, we've got gas here. You'd press in the temperature control a bit like you do with the heater itself over there. You're pressing the temperature control, and again, I'm just going to do it one handed. You'd hold the temperature control button in, then hit the igniter on the right hand on the left hand side. Once it's ignited, this little red line here will come around into the green to work as a pilot light. So as long as that little red line that you see at the bottom there is in the green or on the black line, then it means the fridge system has ignited on gas. Again, you'd hold in the gas valve once it has ignited for around five to ten seconds, just to allow the thermocouple to warm up. On the left hand side here, you've got your uh, 240 volt supply coming into the fridge and again you can control the temperature as you can on gas on the dial on the right hand side. Now you will notice there is also a battery symbol there essentially when you're connected to the car at the front when you, or when you're connected to the car for towing purposes if you've got the right connections on your car you'll actually be able to use the fridge as a call box. So you'll be able to spin the dial around to the 12 volt supply here and that will allow the fridge to work as a call box while you're traveling down to the road. It won't completely chill the fridge or freeze the ice box However, it will keep the beers and wine chilled for when you get to site. So when you're setting up on site, you can have a nice uh, glass of whatever you desire. Turn the fridge back off, spin the dial around to the off position here, and that is the off position for the fridge. Next up, we're going into the bathroom on the caravan. This is the last thing we'll go through in the video. Toilet system, have a pump flush on top of the toilet to pump the toilet system up and down. You have a full indicator light here, so when the toilet waste cassette is full, that will actually illuminate red. And down the front of the toilet, you have the waste handle, which you pull across, as you can see here, to allow the toilet waste to go in the cassette under the van. 
The toilet seat does turn for your convenience, so the toilet seat will actually spin either direction. However, when you are removing the cassette from underneath the van, you need to make sure it's pointing straight across towards the shower. If it's not, you won't be able to release the cassette from underneath the van. The reason being, it has two lockout tabs on there, so if the toilet is in use, the cassette can't be removed and you end up with a nasty mess in the bottom of the toilet cassette locker. Cooker, actually, I'll just quickly run through the cooker system. Cooker does work like your household cooker. Um, igniter on the front itself. Sorry, no igniter on this one, so you need one of the uh, clicker sole lighters to be able to ignite the cooker, fridge and grill. Um, obviously they are available in places like Wilkinson's etc. Um, very cheaply. So you'd need one of those to ignite the system on there. If you have any further questions on the Bailey Ranger 474, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the Caravan Company and we'd be more than happy to help. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoy the caravan. Bye bye for now.